Today I'm making a dress. I've been so excited to do this since I first made a dress but I made the dress in colours that I didn't really like because I just wanted to get the pattern down for it and now I've got the colours I want to use and I'm just excited to make a dress that I actually want to wear. I have actually taken apart the last dress now and reused the yarn so it's not gone to waste um, but yeah I'm just excited to make a dress that I actually want to wear. So before we get started, what you're going to need, either a knitting machine, you can do it by hand but I feel like it would take forever, but if you want a long project to work on, by all means do it by hand. You can just take the measurements that I'm doing and apply it to either hand knitting, hand crocheting, whatever your chosen method is, but I'm going to be using a machine because I've got it here and I love it. I'm not quite sure how much yarn we'll get through yet, but I have got five... Yeah, five balls of dark purple yarn. This is just acrylic DK weight yarn. It's just paint box yarns um, brand. Don't know what color it is, but it's like dark purple. And then I've also got this color for the top bit, but we're gonna get to that a lot later. Um, so I'll keep you updated or right on screen or let you know how much yarn we're going to use but at this point in time I don't know so yeah that's something I'll keep you updated with. I would love to use better quality wool but I currently am unemployed so it's going to be acrylic wool for now. So basically the plan is to make three panels for the main dress part, one bigger one for the front and then two smaller ones for the back. When I first made a dress I did three panels all the same size which was fine it was just a little bit big so I've learned from that and I'm gonna do one big panel so probably casting on 45 pegs for the big panel and then I'm gonna do two smaller pegs which will most likely be 27 pegs each I might change that I'll let you know but currently that's what I'm thinking. I also made the dress too long last time, so I'm gonna measure it so that it comes like a midi length, and then if I want it a bit longer, I can add some crochet to the bottom and like make it a bit fancy that way. Um, but yeah, those are my learnings, those are my goals. Also, we're only making like from here down to past the knees because then I wanna hand make the top bit um, and finish off the bottom, so this is just like the main part of the dress, but there's more work to be done than just this bit. So that's where we're starting, I just wanted to lay it out for you. Um, yeah, let's get cracking. So I usually cast on and off with scrap yarn, but I'm actually deciding to only cast off with scrap yarn this time. I'm actually just gonna cast on with my yarn that I'm gonna be using. So the scrap yarn cast off, which will be the neater edge, will actually be the top of the dress and the rougher edge, which will be the normal cast on, will be the bottom of the dress, but I want to add crochet to the bottom anyway, so it doesn't matter too much that it's gonna be slightly rougher, but it's still not massively rough, but I just want to have that neater edge at the top where I'm then gonna be creating the top of the dress. Um, and I just want it to be a bit neater. To cast on for a panel, I'm just skipping the white peg, two pink pegs, and then starting on this one here. I always do this because when you're cranking backwards and forwards, it tends to skip these ones anyway, so I just avoid the hassle and skip those already for myself. So yeah, you just want to weave in and out to cast on. So that is 45 pegs cast on for the bigger panel. You can easily count how many pegs you've cast on by just counting how many you haven't. So this is a 48 pin machine, then there's three remaining, which means that there are 45 that have been cast on. And then you just want to start knitting, going slowly for the first couple of rounds just to make sure it's knitting properly. So that is 10 rows knitted. The row counter for panels doesn't really work, so I tend to take my lovely sheet of paper here and just make a tally every time I get to 10. It's the best way I've found for counting rows and I've just found it quite reliable because I can count to 10 
quite easily. Um, and if I make a note every time I've done 10 that I don't lose track. I can't remember how many rows I want to knit, but I will just carry on measuring it as I go and let you know how many rows we're gonna be doing. But we're gonna just do this for a long time. And then I will update you when something changes. I'm gonna add another yarn into the mix when we get to the top bit of the dress. Um, just for a little bit of detail. So I'm just going to carry on doing this for however many rows and then I'll let you know when to add in the other yarn. I think I've said this before in tutorials but just as a tip for not dropping stitches at the end you always want to make sure that your yarn has gone under this last peg before you start cranking back the other way. So it has gone under that so I'm safe to start cranking back. But if it doesn't go under that, then you could drop stitches at the end. So yeah, you just want to crank so that the yarn pops under there and then you can safely turn back and start cranking the other way. So at this point, I have knit 150 rows. I've measured it and it's not quite the length I want it to be. I've realised I want it to be about 33 inches. So it's not really that at the moment, it's a few inches short. So I've decided it's time for the next step, which is adding another color into the mix. So I'm not changing colors, I'm just adding a color. So I actually didn't end up loving how this looked. So I did actually unravel my project to take out this second yarn, but I wanted to keep the step in just in case you want to do it. But yeah, I didn't love how it looked. So I took it out, which is why it's not in my finished dress. But yeah, I just wanted to keep it in as an option for you. And it really doesn't change the process that much. Like if you want this, you just add in your second yarn. If you don't, you just carry on knitting as usual. So it really doesn't change a lot. And I did this with white lace weight yarn with a green top and I just liked how the white just peeked through with the green. So I'm hoping for a similar effect with this. This is just a style craft lace weight yarn. I think it's in the shade Charm, but I'm not quite sure. I'll try and link everything below. But it's just this really nice like jewel, colour changing yarn. It's really nice. So to add this in, I'm just going back to the turning peg, if that's what we're going to call it. I'm feeding this in. I actually do want a bit of security here, so I might tuck it under this one that's currently kind of on the peg, it's kind of like under the the ledge bit. Um, but I just want some security in there, so I might actually end up fastening it a bit more later. But so far I'm just putting it through there, making sure that's still on the ledge, because we don't want to ruin that. Um, I might actually just tie it. Yeah, I'm just going to tie it for some security, but this is optional, you could probably leave it loose and it'd be fine. So I'm actually doing a few knots just to be sure, but again, this isn't necessary. I just want it for security. And that's it. So now you just knit with the two yarns feeding into the machine. So now that I've done 50 rows with the two colors, I'm going to start the cast off process. So I take my yarn and I get myself some spare and then I ball it up and put it in the middle so that I can go back along and crochet along the edge once I take the scrap yarn out. So I'm about to switch to scrap yarn to actually cast off. Um, but yeah, I need this bundle of yarn so that I can crochet the edge and take the scrap yarn back out to leave myself with a really neat edge. So I've put my ball of good yarn in the middle and I'm just switching to my scrap yarn. So I'm just gonna feed it through and knit how I usually would for a few rows and then I'll just wind to the handle until it all falls away. So I've now cast off this piece. You can see where some of the yarn is poking through. Um, yeah, this is the front panel. I'm now gonna make two smaller panels of the same length, um, just of a different width. I realise I've just got myself all tangled there. But yeah, they're all gonna be 150 rows long. This is roughly 33 inches long. But instead of casting on, is it 45 that I cast on? I'm now gonna cast on about 30. So that front panel was pretty much a whole ball 
of the DK weight yarn. This is, or this was an 100 gram ball and this is all that I have left from it. I'm actually not gonna start the next one with this. I'm just gonna start a new ball because I am gonna go back and crochet the bottom of the dress and I will need this wool for that anyway. And I just think it will be neater if I start a fresh ball for a fresh panel, but this won't be going to waste. So I've cast on 31 pegs. This is one of the back panels. So I'm about to make two identical back panels, which are 31 wide and 150 long. So I'm following the same process as I did for the first panel, just these ones are 31 pegs wide. Obviously you can adjust this for your body shape. Ideally, I'd love to make this with just two panels, like one front, one back, but I just know it wouldn't fit me right. It'd probably be a bit see-through because it'd be a bit stretched. So yeah, just make as many panels as you need for your size. I found that three is quite good and I don't need three complete full size panels. I need one big one and two smaller ones. But yeah, I will measure everything in inches and give you my size as a reference point. So hopefully you can kind of work out what kind of measurements you would need. Um, but yeah, that's the thing I like about the design of this dress is it's completely adaptable to your size. So I've now got my three panels of 200 rows. These ones are the back panels and this one is the middle front panel bit. I've probably already explained this, but yeah, I did decide to unravel the first front panel I did because I just didn't really love how the second yarn added in. I liked it on the other top that I did. I think it worked really well, but it just wasn't really working on this dress. So my top tip with crocheting and knitting is if you don't like something, you should probably fix it sooner rather than later instead of carrying on and seeing if it gets better because I feel like sometimes or like the majority of the time, for me at least, I don't end up liking it more. So it's just a bit of a waste of time. So I just unravel, start again if needed, um, and like sooner rather than later is better for me. Anyway, the next step is to secure the ends which have the scrap yarn on them. I've already explained, but scrap yarn just helps me to have neater ends. You don't have to do it, but I just really like it. So the way that I'm securing the ends here, I'm actually gonna slip stitch along the last purple row before the orange. In my mesh top tutorial, I decided to single crochet. So sometimes I do single crochet along the last line, other times I slip stitch. I don't really have a rhyme or reason to it. I just kind of go with what I want to do. But yeah, today I am slip stitching along the last purple line. So what I do is I just pick up the thread onto my hook pull some yarn over, pull that through. So that just gets the thread onto my hook. And then I move on to the next one, do the same thing, push through the loop, pull some yarn over, pull it through, and then just pull it through again. So in my mesh top tutorial, I was doing a single crochet. Now I'm just slip stitching. So yeah, just go through the loop, pick up some yarn, pull it through, then pull that same yarn, through the other loop. So I'll just show it one more time. I'm picking up that last thread, pulling some yarn over, pulling it through, and pulling it through that loop again. You do wanna keep this fairly loose so that you've still got some stretch in the knit. It doesn't have to be like really, really loose, but just not super tight. So I'm just gonna carry on doing this until I've secured the whole edge, and then I'm gonna pull the scrap yarn out. I'll show me removing the scrap yarn because I've realized Normally in videos I just say I remove the scrap yarn, but I don't actually say how. It's super simple and doesn't really need an explanation, but I thought I would just show you anyway. The process for each of these panels is exactly the same, so I'll just show you on this one and then I'll repeat it on the other panels. But yeah, all you want to do is slip stitch the edge to secure it and then remove the scrap yarn on each panel. So for the final stitch, I'm actually gonna do a single crochet instead. So I'm just doing the same thing by pulling the yarn through, but I'm actually putting some more yarn over the hook and pulling through both the loops. Then I'm just wrapping around again and pulling that through. And then I'm gonna cut the yarn here and that's just gonna secure it. So yeah, once you cut it, just pull the yarn and that makes a knot and that's all secure now. And then removing the scrap yarn is really easy. You literally just unravel it. 
So I'm gonna ball mine up because I'm gonna use it again as scrap yarn and I just find it easier to keep it all balled up and neat. Um, but yeah, this is how you remove scrap yarn. You just unravel it. So then that is one complete panel with the edge all secured and you can see that it's just a really nice neat edge. So now that all of the ends are secured, it's time to stitch them all together. I've laid them out so that the front panel is in the middle and then the two back panels are in the back. I'm going to stitch up either this first or this first, doesn't really matter. And then I'll stitch up the other side and then stitch up the back last. So the back will be these two joining together. But I'll show you all of that. We're gonna be slip stitching together. So using the same stitch that I did the top bits with, um, just to attach two sides together. You probably should pin this. I don't know where my pins are, so I'm not gonna bother. Um, but yeah, basically we're gonna be slip stitching these panels together. You want them to be inside out so that the right side is facing outwards. Um, and you're working on the inside. So I'll show you for a little bit and then hopefully you get the gist. But yeah, just stitching them all together to make a big long tube. So to get started, I've just created a slip knot on my um, hook and then I'm poking it through two loops. I'll try and separate them, kind of. So like two loops on one side and then two loops on the other side. These should be quite obvious to you, it's where you've kind of turned your work, so there should be some quite noticeable, almost like Vs down the side, and that's what you want to be stitching together. So I'm just attaching my yarn at this point. I've said before, I don't really know what the right way to do this is, but this is just what I do. I kind of just do like a single crochet kind of knot thing, but just attach your yarn to your work somehow. And then I'm poking through, as I said, a kind of V bit. So there's like two stitches on my hook. Then I'm doing the same to the other side. So there's two stitches on my hook there. I'm wrapping my yarn round, pulling it through, then pulling it through the loop again. And we're just gonna do that the entire way down on all the panels until we have a big tube. You don't want to do this massively tight because if you do, your seams will look quite bunched so do it with a little bit of give in your loops and keep kind of tugging at your project to make sure it's not bunched up too much because if you do it too tight it'll look bunched and your seams will look really noticeable whereas if you do it fairly loose you can kind of get away with your seams a bit better they look a bit more seamless invisible um, so yeah just keep your loops fairly loose so it is beginning to look more like a dress now. We've got our long tube that we're now gonna work on. So I've just turned it right way round now. So this is the outside, this is the front. So we've got the big panel for the front and then for the back, we have a seam down it because that's our two smaller panels. I have decided to leave a slit at the back. I just kind of thought it'd be nice. So that is the bottom of the dress. Um, now I am going to work actually on the bottom of the dress before we move on to the top bit. So I'm going to actually do double crochet around the bottom and then a line of gappy double crochet. So I will get started and show you what I mean. But yeah, basically we're going to do one line of double crochet and then one more line of gappy double crochet. I might decide to do even more than this, but this is where I'm starting. So I'm gonna just start on one of the seams. So I'm just gonna start here. I'm gonna attach my yarn like I did at the top. So just wrapping it round and pulling it through. Not the neatest way, don't know if it's right, but there we go, it's attached. So to do double crochet, I am just wrapping my yarn around my hook once poking into a gap. This isn't gonna be very specific because the gaps are a bit all over the place. So I'm just pushing into a gap which looks right. So I'm just gonna move that so you can hopefully see my hands a bit better. So yeah, wrapping around once on the hook, 
finding a gap to push into, wrapping it round again, pulling it through, wrapping round, pull through two, wrap round, pull through two. So again, wrapping it round my hook, finding a gap to push into, pull some yarn through, wrap it round the hook, pull through two, wrap round the hook, pull through two. So I'll do that a few times so hopefully you get the gist. And then for the next layer, I'll basically be doing the same stitch, but chaining one between them and skipping a gap to make it look a bit gappier. So yeah, I'll get to that. But yeah, for now we're just gonna do this all the way around the bottom, up the slit as well. So I'll be like crocheting along the sides of the slit. Um, but it all works as kind of like the bottom of the dress. I'll be just following the line that's been created and pushing through the gaps to make some double crochet at the bottom. So now that I've done my double crochet all the way round, I'm just gonna slip stitch it to the first stitch just to join it all up. And then I'm gonna chain up two and turn my work. So now working back this way, I'm doing the same kind of stitch. I'm actually gonna chain one more. Um, but yeah, I'm doing the same stitch, just skipping a gap. So instead of going into this first one, I'm going into the second one and I'll be doing that the whole way round. So I'll chain up between stitches, skip a gap, double crochet into the next one to create a kind of gappier look. So chain one, double crochet, skipping a gap, chain one, double crochet, skipping a gap. And that creates this gappier double crochet. So I'm just gonna carry on doing this all the way around the bottom. And then when I get to the end of the round, I will slip stitch it to the beginning stitch again and that will complete the round and then I'll probably just tie it off and cut the yarn so that that is the finished bottom. I think that's all I'll do. I might decide to do another row of gappy double crochet but I haven't decided yet. So the bottom is now done. I did one layer of double crochet and then actually two layers of gappy double crochet. So now it's time to move on to the top of the dress. So what I'm gonna do for this, is gonna be really, really simple, just quite time consuming. I'm gonna just single crochet a bralette kind of bit. I actually just want it to be like straight round, so I'm not gonna do any shaping, I think. I might change my mind, but I'll let you know. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the purple color, this same purple, do one or two rows of double crochet and then I'm gonna switch to my lighter purple colour. So I will show you what I'll be doing but it's so so simple. Um, just yeah as I said it'll be time consuming. So I'm gonna start at the back seam and I'm just going to attach my yarn onto my project using the same method that I always do just kind of tying it on. So then to do the single crochet, I'm just gonna push into the gaps, pull my yarn through, pull some more yarn over, and then pull through those two loops. So if I do that again, I'm just pushing through the loops, pulling through some yarn, pulling some yarn over my hook, and then pulling that through the two loops. I'll do it a few times so that you can see but it's such a simple stitch. Just very time consuming. I'll try zoom in and see if my camera actually wants to focus. That might work. So yeah, just to show you again, I'm going through a hole, pulling some yarn through, hooking some yarn over and pulling it through the two loops.
Now that we've done that single crochet, you can see that it's creating these Vs at the top, and that's what we'll be pushing through in our next rounds of single crochet. So instead of just pushing through a gap in the work, we're creating these Vs to push through. So I did two rows of single crochet. I'm now gonna move on to my lighter yarn. I'm actually using two balls at once because I just want quite a thick bust area. So I'm just gonna attach my yarn here at the back again and then carry on doing what I've been doing. I might need to do some decreases because it is quite big still, but because it's such a small stitch, I'm wondering if it's gonna get tighter by itself anyway. Um, so I'm, I'll keep you updated with that. I might end up doing some decreases or the size of the stitch might mean that it just gets tighter anyway. So this is what the crochet is looking like round the top. I really love how these colors look together. Um, but now I wanna do some decreasing and kind of just work up the front. So this is the back um, and I will like tuck in ends obviously. Um, but yeah, I just want to do, I wanna build up the front a bit more and do a bit of like a scoop back or like a bit of a lower back. So I'm basically just gonna show you what I need to do to achieve that. So I've just counted 15 stitches from the side seam and I'm gonna attach my yarn here. So I'm just gonna work my way around the front and then 15 stitches along the other side of the back. So now that I've reached the other side, I'm just gonna chain up one, turn my work, and then I'm gonna skip this gap and just start crocheting into the next one. So this will help to decrease the back stitches. And then I'm just gonna continue doing this and doing the decreases on the other side until I'm at the height I want it to be. So I'll probably do quite a few more rows of this and make quite a nice scooped back. So I just realized I missed out a really important step in decreasing. So this applies when you're working back towards your decrease coming from the other way. So I've just been crocheting round to my decrease point. Um, and then what you wanna do is go through your second to last hole, grab some yarn, and then go through your last hole, grab more yarn, pull some yarn over, and then go through all of those loops. Then you can chain up one, turn your work, and then don't crochet into the first one, crochet into the next. So just basically skip one, and then, yeah, you've got your really nice, smooth decrease. So I've made my way back round to the decrease on this side, and I'm gonna show you again what I do to decrease. So I push through the second to last hole, pull through some yarn, and then I push through the last hole, pull through more yarn, pull some yarn over the hook, and then pull that through all three loops on the hook. I then chain up one, turn my work, then I skip this first hole here, and then just crochet straight into the second one. So the bust bit of the dress is now done. I've just added some hair grips as stitch markers for where I want to add the straps. And all I'm gonna do for the straps is literally just chain about 50 stitches. Um, and that's gonna be the straps because I want them to be quite thin. So I'm just gonna attach my yarn and then do some chains. Like it's as simple as that. So this is the finished dress. I'll add like a vertical video because you can't see the whole thing here. Um, but yeah, I really love how it turned out. I didn't film about adding this double crochet to the top, but I literally did what I did at the bottom of the dress, just added a line of double crochet. Just thought it looked really nice to like finish off the top bit. Um, and then yeah, I did film the straps, which were all lovely and finished. I also added this little bow here. I just weaved some, sorry I'm looking in the mirror behind the camera, but I just weaved some thread all the way around and then tied it up and I just think it looks really nice and it kind of cinches in a little bit more as well. So it adds a bit of detail, but it's also practical. I really love this. I've been so excited to make a dress since I first tried it, um, but I'm just happy to have it in colors and like a style that I really like. So yes, I am very happy with it. But yeah, that is everything for this video. So I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you again soon.